I have made yet. Yes, <laughs> yes, the crap I've made yet. I'm not the biggest conspiracy theorist, but I don't know if we could even call this a conspiracy theorist. We're talking about the CIA, cocaine, Iran, Contra, Gary Webb, Freeway, Ricky Ross, Oliver North, and this thing ends uh, with the whistleblower committing suicide and shooting himself twice in the head. Don't go anywhere. Bruce I don't need Lawrence. nothing else. Every time I'm with you, yo, it's something else. It's a fact, it's a fact, and it's nothing else. Got your hand out, you don't even need to help. Ooh, I don't need nothing else. Every time I'm with you, yo, it's something else. It's a fact, it's a fact, and it's nothing else. Got your hand out, you don't even need to help. Ooh, that's right. What's going on? It's Ruslan with KingsDreamENT.com. This channel exists to encourage, empower, inspire you to live God's dream for your life, the home for the outliers, those who defy statistics, defy the odds, the politically agnostic, those who want God's best for their life. We all come here, we discuss different topics for music marketing current events, social issues, and everything in between. So, yo, this video is crazy, okay? Uh, I'm gonna try to keep myself limited to a 15 minute time frame. I'm trying to make these videos shorter. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to stick to it, but I'm gonna do my very best. So, yesterday I made a video about reparations and some people freaked out and it was responding to Adam Scholl's video about reparations, you should go watch that. And him basically saying, hey, you know, slavery was 150 years ago, kind of tough to justify reparations for black people because of that. But if we examine all of the things done post-slavery, Jim Crow, so on and so forth, it's not wild to acknowledge that, man, there's some bad stuff done. And I would push even further and I'd say, hey, what about recently? What about the 80s? What about the war on drugs? Whew, the crack epidemic, the CIA being complicit in this thing. I'm gonna do my very best to break all this down. What we do know, what we can speculate, what is a conspiracy, and what is what is what is truthful. So we're gonna we're gonna do our best. Now, here's my issue. Uh, here's my issue. Real quick, before we get into that, again, if you're watching this live, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know where you're watching this from. That helps a ton. It helps it push it up the algorithm. And you know, follow me on Instagram. About to crack uh, 30,000 there. About to crack 20,000 on YouTube. When we crack 20,000 on YouTube, I'll make a video, a special video. But anyway, listen. Where you're watching this from, give this video a thumbs up. I know this is gonna be a controversial topic and I don't even know how many people are interested in this. I think it's extremely fascinating. Now, let's just jump right into it. Let's just jump right into it. A couple names you should know. A couple names you should know. Uh, the first name is Gary Webb. Gary Webb is the whistleblower on this entire thing. First name, I'm gonna come back full circle to Gary Webb. Gary Webb is an interesting person because he wrote articles and wrote an entire book and basically exposing this whole thing of the CIA being complicit in allowing cocaine to flood United States streets, sparking the crack epidemic. Why? Because they needed money and resources to fight against communism and to fund the Contras in Nicaragua. It's a lot. There's a lot. The Iran Contra scandal, we were using money from uh, Iran and selling weapons to to, to fund the Contras to fight against communism. There, there was once a time in American history where America was hell-bent on uh, trying, to defeat, trying to defeat communism at any cost. This is right under Ronald Reagan. Now, why am I making this video? I'm making this video because a lot of conservatives, uh, one, they kind of idolize Ronald Reagan, which I think is kind of crazy. And two, when talking about issues of systemic racism, most of the blame a lot of times goes towards Democrats and creating a welfare state and all these wild, uh, all these wild things that have happened in history that were bad. Right now, let let's talk about why it is important to acknowledge this because this is one this is recent so we're not talking about redlining in the 60s we're not talking about jim crow we're not talking about things pre-civil rights we're talking post-civil rights and what happened with the war on drugs the subsequent 100 to 1 disparity of crack versus coke and the sentencing which led to a lot of black fathers going to jail a million of them right and there's about 30 million people uh, in in America who are black, a million of those, pri primarily young men and fathers, uh, went to prison because of this entire thing. 
So my, my father-in-law went to prison because of some of this stuff, right? And it is wild to think about this happening and the government potentially being not just aware, but even potentially being complicit in it. And so let's just jump into this video. Appreciate everybody watching. Hey, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know where you're watching this from. I'm going to do my best to unpack as much of this as I can. And this is, listen, this is all stuff you guys could check out. There's a link to a movie inside of, um, inside of the link description called Kill the Messenger. It's on Netflix. And I think they, you could watch it. You know what I'm saying? You could check that out. Uh, it's, it gives this story in a very exhaustive format. Um, but let's get right into it. Okay, so whew, there's a lot here. Now, let's check this out. So first name you should know, Oliver North. Oliver North worked with cocaine traffickers to arm terrorists. Now he'll be president of the NRA. That's pretty wild. So Oliver North worked under Ronald Reagan. Okay, Ronald Reagan was the poster child for trickle-down economics, poster child for conservative policies, all of these different things. He wasn't really an evangelical, but he kind of became one. Some, 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 some tapes later leaked of Ronald making some, making some wild comments to Richard Nixon while Ronald Reagan was still a governor, some racist comments and stuff that he said on tape, right? So this, you guys got to know, Ronald Reagan and the moral right it in, impacted and influenced a lot of our conservative moral majority ideologies that we see. So it's just important to know the history of this. You guys can Google the conservative right or the moral right and their foundation as essentially being segregationist and then moving over to the abortion issue. You guys can Google that, do the research for yourself. I made a whole video about that. But Ronald Reagan is elected president. Now, at the time, we're trying to stop the spread of communism. We meaning America. This is the 80s, we're trying to stop the spread of communism. That was Ronald Reagan's ideology. Don't spread communism. If you spread communism, Russian tanks are going to be in America. Remember, Russia was a huge superpower at the time. Soviet Union was popping. I was actually in Russia at this time. I was born in 1984 in Azerbaijan, Baku, under Soviet Russia. And we didn't come out until 1991. And Ronald Reagan wanted, was, was hell-bent. And, but what happened was Congress passed this law where the president couldn't meddle in other countries' affairs. They, 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 they added more checks and balances. So he needed money to fund the Contras. Congress said, no, you can't. He thought of a workaround, the Iran-Contra thing, which is a convoluted, long-scale thing of Oliver North helping to gain, sell arms to... Iran and they had American hostages using some of that money to fund the Contras in Nicaragua who were trying to overthrow the socialistic government there. Our interest was in the spread of democracy and to destroy communism. This is all historical. And later on, the Iran Contra thing went like publicly viral. Now, in the process, there's also a ton of evidence that the that America also looked the other way or knew exactly what was going on with the, the, the Colombian cocaine being flooding our streets and essentially being kind of complicit in starting the, uh, the, the crack epidemic or, or like being aware of what's happening, potentially like being a part of it, the CIA. And I'm going to show you guys a couple of different clips. This is really wild stuff. Uh, <laughs> this stuff is over the top, yo. It's over the top. Like, why, why read fiction when, when, when history is so much more interesting, right? And a lot of you guys don't know this. So let's just, okay, first name, Oliver North. Check this out. Last year, uh, came out. He, this guy's the, you know, the, he worked under the Reagan administration, 1981. One of Reagan's top priorities was organizing and funding the Contras, a guerrilla military force to overthrow the revolutionary socialist Sandinista government of Nicaragua, right? But the Contras engaged in extensive gruesome terrorism. So the Contras were pretty wild. They wanted to fund this. Now, North enthusiastically looked for cash wherever he could find it and led many of the uh, Kennestine schemes that later became known as the Iran-Contra scandal. Look up the Iran-Contra scandal. This really happened. This is wild, right? And where are we at? Meanwhile, the Contras had a neat idea of their own, facilitating cocaine trafficking through Central America into the U.S., into the US with the cut going towards supporting their war against the Sedanistas. Some Contras were themselves cocaine traffickers and others were simply happy to make alliances of convenience with drug cartels. So the CIA is knowing this. 
and they're not really doing a whole lot about it. There's no evidence that North actively wanted to smuggle campaign. What I'm not saying is that the U.S. government wanted to smuggle campaign, uh, excuse me, smuggle cocaine into the U.S. That is not what I'm saying. But there's a ton to say that they knew it was happening. They did nothing about it. And then when it hit the streets and it destroyed communities, that it was really bad. And then they went on to really punish harshly, harshly, 100 to 1 sentencing disparities, black and brown neighborhoods. Let's keep going. And there's no evidence North knew his cocaine traffickers from, uh, from consequence from other branches of the U.S. government. Yes. Did he work together with a known drug lord? Yes. This is documented. We all know this. All in all, North's connection to drug trafficking was so egregious that in 1988, he was banned from entering Nicaragua's neighbor, Costa Rica. So he's banned from there. This may seem shocking to the easily shocked, but it's all been documented in various government investigations. All investigations, all you need to, all you need to do in order is blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's some stuff from the CIA website. Check this out. Allegations of drug trafficking. In 1981, a report of headquarters relying on information obtained from an asset stated that the Adrian leadership made a decision to engage in drug smuggling to the United States in order to finance the anti-Sedanista uh, operations, to finance these Contras. Reportedly, an initial run taking place in July 1981. Once the drugs were delivered and paid for, Downs reportedly turned over um, uh, proceeds, right? So this is how they were funding trying to stop the spread of communism. This is this is what was going on. So you guys can Google Oliver North. Wild figure. This is this is some, some naughty stuff. Hey, if you're watching this, give this video a quick thumbs up. That helps us a ton. Now, Oliver North worked with Reagan, president of the NRA. Sketchy stuff funding stuff in a way that they shouldn't have because they couldn't get money from Congress. Now, second person you should know about, Gary Webb. Gary Webb was a journalist in, in San Jose. He is the main character of a movie called Kill the Messenger. Gary Webb, oddly enough, ends up at the end of this entire ordeal. You guys should really go watch the movie. It's actually a really well done movie. Gary Webb ends up... Uh, killing himself by shooting himself twice in the head. I don't know who kills themselves that way. I've never, you know, that, but apparently when, you know, CIA is involved and weird stuff is happening, apparently people uh, shoot themselves twice in the head. Crazy stuff. Let me show you the end of this clip um, and we can, we can check it out. And by the way, um, those of you guys that are like, yo, the CIA controls Hollywood, I don't know if both of these situations could be true. I think it's way more probable that they allowed cocaine to flood the streets of America to fund communism, you know, and then to, for them to control Hollywood, it's really weird that they would let this massively successful, critically acclaimed movie made, get made called Kill the Messenger. There was also another movie made about Tom Cruise, uh, Tom, with starring Tom Cruise, who was a pilot for some of these things. So I think it's really interesting that, I don't know how both of these things can be true. Um, how can the CIA fund these things and allow movies to come out about it? That's where I think, you know, I, I, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if both of these things could be true at the same time. But let's let's check out the end of his movie. Uh, this is on Netflix. It's linked in the description. Check it out. Town hall meeting allows the South Central community to interact with the director of Central Intelligence. Please so this is unprecedented. The South Central community is so upset because of these allegations that they have the CIA director come and interact with them and do like a basically like a Q&A type of situation. This is crazy. Now, watch what happens. He's this is the end of the movie. In welcoming CIA director John Dorch. So, Gary Webb drops all these crazy articles. Uh Freeway Ricky Ross, another name you should know. Freeway Ricky Ross is another name you should know. Freeway Ricky Ross was who Gary Webb was interviewing. He drops all of these articles, and then the director of the CIA took, you know, took this step to meet with the citizens of South Central LA. Uh, LA. This is on Netflix, huge movie. This is not, this is not a good look for the How CIA. How are we supposed to trust the CIA officials to investigate themselves? Mm, that's a good question. Is Gary Webb in the house? Is the first thing I want to ask. Is Gary Webb in here? Gary Webb is the reporter for the San Jose Mercury News who broke the story wide open. 
allowed Gary Webb to have full access to the investigator. You think they allowed Gary Webb to have full access to the CIA? <laughs> and comparatively go through it as the investigation goes on. Thank you. Okay, so right after this, the director of the CIA quits one month later. He left the CIA one month later. Okay, that's interesting, right? So, um, Brett, just pay attention for a minute, bro, before you're commenting. Listen to the video. Listen to what I'm presenting before you keep adding stuff, okay? Because just, just listen to me. The CIA director meets with them. They, they, they're in the middle of this scandal, and he quits one month later. Now, watch what happens after the fact, right? In 1998, the CIA released a 400-page report that acknowledged the agency associated with members of the Contra movement who engaged in drug trafficking. This is crazy. Our CIA government acknowledged, acknowledged that they associated with people who were smuggling drugs a part of this Contra. Remember, Reagan wants to kill communism and fight communism. In order to do that, they got had to get funding. How were they getting funding? They were allowing some of these Contras to smuggle cocaine into the United States. The CIA knew about it. Why is this important? Because when we're talking about systemic racism, this to me is one of the most obvious ways. America knew, or at least people high up in the CIA knew that these people were importing massive amounts of cocaine and did nothing to stop it. Okay, that's crazy. That's wild, okay? They knew they did nothing to stop it. Why? Because it was primarily impacting poor people and people of color. So when we're talking about reparations, we don't have to go that far back. We could look at the 80s and our government being complicit in knowing that this was happening. Now, let's keep watching. We, 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 what was we doing? We was consumed with the President Clinton Monica Lewinsky scandal, right? So nobody really paid attention. No one really cared that this stuff was going on. That's that's interesting. So I'm gonna tie this up for you guys in a second, right? There's no question in my mind there is a complicity in the flow of drugs into this country. Same. Okay, that is John Kerry. He ran for president. He just acknowledged that there was complicity, meaning that not a conspiracy, but they were complicit. The CIA was complicit. Pilots, same airstrips, same airplanes, carrying guns and drugs at the same time. And people knew it. South Central Los Angeles and every other city in America are owed an explanation. So Gary Webb, so, so they, they completely destroyed this man's reputation. Yeah, so this is crazy. So this dude, and, you, and, and it's really gruesome, and I don't encourage you to, but if you guys want, just look up Gary Webb's suicide, and, and there's a really gruesome picture out there. It's wild. Now, let me show you guys uh, something else. This, so how does it, why does this matter? CIA, U.S. government, complicit. I'm not going to say they did it on purpose. But I think the CIA knew what was going on. I think there's enough evidence to establish that. You go read the documents for yourself. You can, you can make up your own decision, right? What does this mean? The government is complicit in allowing what? Massive amounts of drugs to enter poor neighborhoods. Why is this important? Well, again, conservatives like to point to all the democratic policies and say, well, that's the reason why fatherlessness is high in the black community. That's the reason the family deteriorated. They gloss over the 80s. What was happening in the 80s? Well, another one of Ronald Reagan's huge ideologies is called trickle down economics, right side economics. Right side economics is the belief that if you give tax breaks to the people at the top, the wealthiest people, you help them not pay as many taxes, it'll trickle down and the poor people will also get the benefit of less taxes on the top. Uh, kind of tough to prove. I'm not a big fan of taxes, but that is the logic. In the 80s, didn't work out so well. Didn't work out so well for the South Bronx. Didn't work out so well for South Central LA. Did not work out so well for black people and poor people. It worked out pretty awfully. So you have these communities that are already struggling with low employment rates, low 
um, low opportunities, high poverty, and all of a sudden, a new drug floods the market called crack cocaine that is very cheap to make and gives you a very high, very high dose for very cheap, but it's a shorter amount, a shorter amount of time. So what happens when people are poor? What happens when there's not a lot of economic opportunity? Well, people start self-medicating. They start using drugs. They start using alcohol. They start abusing these things in, in record numbers. And that's what happened because there, there's despair. There's a sense of hopelessness. This is why poverty is, is pretty awful, right? Now, check this out. This is from uh, Uproxx. It's a clip kind of explaining what followed this, right? Huge amounts of despair, huge amounts of addiction because of poverty. Some would say because of Ronald Reagan's trickle-down economics. Now watch this. Fix things without knowing how they got broken in the first place is a great way to break them worse. Trying to fix things without knowing how they got broken in the, in the first place is a, a way to make things worse. You had Ronald Reagan getting involved. Retribution must be swift and sure for those who decide to make a career of preying on the innocent. You have the militarized police. I've seen plenty of raids in my lifetime. If you've ever seen the movie Straight Outta Compton where the tank rams in the door, that was right around the corner from my house. I remember thinking, that's a house. People live there. If you were caught with rock cocaine, they were getting these sentences for 25 years. You gotta have mandatory rush. You gotta show people if you arrest them, we're gonna keep them. People are going in. So this is crazy. This is wild that this happened. Now let me show you guys another clip real quick. Reagan's anti-drug abuse act imposed harsher sentences on crack than traditional cocaine use. Now this is this is the hundred to one ratio disparity. Why is this important? Because people were sentenced way more harshly for having crack than cocaine, 100 to 1. A comprehensive examination of the 100 to 1 crack versus powder cocaine sentencing disparity under which distribution of just 5 grams of crack carries a minimum 5-year federal prison sentence, while distribution of 500 grams of crack cocaine carry, uh, of, co of powdered cocaine carries the same 5-year mandatory sentence. That's 100 to 1, okay? 100 to 1. That's what happened. Crack cocaine offenders, 82% in the year 2000 was black, 18% was white and Hispanic. Some would say this is a racist law. I would agree. I think this is a very racist law. Let's go back to this. Use Act imposed harsher sentences on crack than traditional cocaine use, leading to a decades-long debate that the law was unfairly targeting minorities and lower-income neighborhoods who couldn't afford the more expensive cocaine powder. Incarcerations in L.A. skyrocketed. By 1995, the California Department of Corrections increased its Black and Latino inmates from 21,476 to 88,376, more than a 400% increase. That's crazy. This led to broken families, an overblown foster care system, increased violence, and a growing skid row that crippled the nation. That's so if we ever want to talk about how did the disparity of wealth grow between black and white families, I think we could point, I think we could point to the war on drugs. I think that is a way more telling sign and the fact that one, the CIA was complicit, two, that we then created these wildly racist hundred to one disparities of crack versus coke. And we had a really, really, really janky way of basically destroying families. And again, my father-in-law was impacted by this, right? He went over petty drug offenses. Now my views on drugs are completely different now. I think we should legalize drugs and help people not use them right, and help people get clean. Now, let's go back to this. It's until a long overdue correction was made. Long overdue correction. August 10th. In 2010, Obama put an end to Reagan's Anti-Drug Abuse Act. While many feel it was too little. So, 100 to one was the disparity, primarily affecting, as of 2006, primarily inf uh, impacting uh, black people horribly, right? 100 to 1. Okay, I'll read this to you guys again. 100 to 1. <laughs> Comprehensive examination of the 100 to 1 crack versus powder cocaine sentencing disparity under which the distribution of 5 grams, 
Five grams of coke carries a minimum five-year pres federal prison sentence, while the distribution of 500 grams of powder cocaine carries the five-year mandatory. So there's this crazy disparity. They corrected in the year 2010. Okay, they corrected in the year 2010 with the Fair Sentencing Act. Uh, fair, excuse me. Yeah, Fair Sentencing Act. Now, a lot of people will say, well, there's no more racist laws on the system. Da 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 da. Well, this was 2010. War on Drugs was 2000. Uh, was was 1980. Okay, this isn't that long ago, guys. This is like people are around today who had their lives and their families ruined because of this stuff, right? So when we're talking about how did we get here as a nation, I don't think we got to look at the 50s and the 60s. I think we could look at the 80s and something that didn't really get corrected until the year 2010. And watch how it got corrected, by the way. This is really interesting that I think a lot of people gloss over. Check this out. Obama passes the Fair Sentencing Act of 2010 which reduced it to an 18 to one. It went from 100 to one to an 18 to one, right? While many feel it was too little too late, it was a step toward- So that's still a disparity, by the way. Remember, check this out. Who uses crack cocaine versus, versus other stuff? Who uses crack cocaine? Black people use crack cocaine, right? So we reduced it, but it's still at, a, it's still at an 18 to one. It's still at a, that's, that's not right, right? Like how is, you, you have, a gram of coke and you could have uh you could have 18 grams of coke and and one gram of crack and the sentence is the same that's a disparity why because primarily black people use crack versus coke because they can't afford it towards correcting a racially skewed prison system but was it enough now there are recent debates about a return to reagan era laws is the war on drugs proving to be a success or a failure let us know your thoughts so, Oliver North, Gary Webb, Freeway Ricky Ross, uh, you, you guys can check all these people out yourself. Do your own research. Listen, do your own research. But when we're talking about reparations and we're talking about the, the, the awful things that happen to the black community, we don't have to look at slavery. We don't have to look at Jim Crow. We don't have to look at redlining. All we have to do is look at the war on drugs and say, goodness gracious, this is pretty awful. This is, this is disgusting. Like, that our government was complicit in this stuff. They knew it was happening. They let it happen anyway. We know that at the least. And then they turned around and sentenced black people at a hundred to one ratio, crack versus cocaine. Cocaine, white people use, crack, black people use, which then disrupted and put a lot of fathers in prison, a million of them, put a lot of fathers in prison. Right, it tore apart a lot of families. It tore apart my in-laws. This is this affected me. It affected my wife the way she grew up. Without having her parents were married, and then crack hit, and they were poor. They started using crack. What happened? Her dad went and did a gang of jail time. Right, this stuff really happened, guys. Like, this this isn't a long time ago. So when we're talking about well, why why is there such racial disparities? Why are there such why, why is there so much, you know, uh, tension between blacks and whites? Because they haven't really had a fair shot, right? Remember, equal opportunity, right? Equal opportunity, not equal outcome. I don't believe in equal outcome, but I do believe in equal opportunity. And as far back as the 80s and 90s, black people haven't really had equal opportunity. They were more harshly sentenced. They you know, our, their own government allowed this stuff to flood the streets. They won a ton of jobs because of Reaganomics. And these are the people who a lot of conservatives idolize. Ronald Reagan, conservative, co Republican values. Some of them that make it even, uh, make it even their, 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 they, they almost make a gospel issue. You know, if, you, if you're not a Republican, like, are you even a Christian? Like, this is some crazy stuff. And so I think there's plenty of blame to go around. And this, I think, is why so many conservatives dropped the ball, whether it's Ben Shapiro, whether it's Candace Owens, whoever, is that they completely ignore the fact that, yeah, there was a racist law as late as 2010. Mississippi didn't officially, officially uh, get rid of slavery on the books until 2013. Like, they didn't literally change their constitution in 2013. There's racist laws that happen, you know, within a, within a decade, like, and, and it's still an 18 to one disparity, right? The, the Fair Sentencing Act is still an 18 to one disparity. So if you're wondering why is there all this stuff? Well, and why are black people angry? Well, go look at the, go, go look at the movie that's in my description, right? It's on Netflix. Most of you guys have Netflix. Go check it out. Check out Kill the Messenger. Check out Gary Webb's story, right? You, you use your own brain.
and you ask yourself, why, why, how? Gosh, and, and so that's where, again, not the organization, but the sentiment that Black Lives Matter is saying, hey, listen, historically, it hasn't seemed like Black Lives have mattered to America. We need things to change, okay? We need things to change. And so these are the facts. This is what happened. This is what happened within our lifetime. Google these things, do your own research, Fair Sentencing Act, um, the war on drugs, uh, how many people went to prison because of it, how many homes were destroyed because of it, how many fathers and husbands went to prison of it, um, and how harshly we came down on some of these communities in the name, in the name of law and order, in the name of all this stuff. My opinion, uh, check it out, look it up for yourself. Give this video a thumbs up. Share it with somebody who needs to hear it. Some wild stuff, man. There's some wild stuff that's happened uh, within our lifetime that I think many of us are just ignorant to. Like, we just don't know that this stuff was used to destroy entire families and entire communities. And there were a lot of unintended consequences, like the fact that now, you know, you're talking about the average uh, white family's net worth is 10 times the average black family's net worth. This stuff is crazy, like, and this stuff is happening right now. So anyway, give this video a thumbs up, man. I got, I might go again live later today, uh, talking about is capitalism evil, and is it, you know, connected to white supremacy. So turn your notifications on so you don't miss anything. Appreciate you guys rocking with me. 